I like to teach the world to sing perfect harmony. I like to buy the world with coke and keep it company. Hey, hey, buddy, so what? So what's your show? I'm he. It is the evening edition. Hey, Monday, Monday night. It is August. No, it was September. Lord have mercy. It's September. 2011, 911 day, 2017. We're here and we're walking in the park as we usually do on such a, 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 a strategy uh, of myself. I do this a lot. I don't know why I do this, but I do it. Apparently, though, people are telling me it's working. Mm hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about something here about mood. Mood. How do you set the mood? For your lover. I don't care if it's your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your fiance, don't care. I want to talk about something nerdy here if I can. Because what I'm really, uh, what I'm uh, seeing and discovering through many of you guys is uh, texts and emails and phone calls and, uh, and homing pigeons uh, and uh, all this stuff is that y'all are bored with each other. Yeah. The people are bored with each other. That's including the people of God. Now that's a shame. How is it possible that y'all can get together and say I'll uh, do this until death I part, making all these promises to each other, sign some type of covenant in your heart, okay, uh, and then y'all get bored with each other a few weeks later. I don't know. It just happens. Okay. Three years go by, you're like, mm. I don't like him no more. Or, you ain't thinking that you don't like him, you're just saying, I like him, I like her, but we don't do the things we used to do. You know, we do the same old thing. Wake up in the morning, take a shower, we go to work, we come home, I cook uh, and clean and pick up the baby from the thingy, okay, and then we'd watch all of the popular shows at night and then we go to bed. We won't even talk in the bed. We don't we don't read together. We don't talk. We don't pray together. We don't we don't go sightseeing. We don't go to the nice ritzy uh, or the low class <laughs> restaurants that we used to go to when we couldn't we couldn't afford it. We don't do that stuff no more. Alright. Let me help y'all out here in a way that possibly well have you ever thought about doing something same way? Same thing, that is. Same thing, but a different way. Let me put it that way. Have you ever thought about doing what you do, your regular routine, but doing it a different way that brings life to the relationship? Have you ever tried that? Man, I'm telling y'all, it's just amazing. Okay? You got to empty the garbage, right? The garbage is full and needs emptying. You can find clever ways. Of having him to take out the garbage. You sure can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all might be able to take out the garbage together. Oh, man. If you decide you're going to help him take out the garbage, now, first of all, he's going to think something's going on. What's up? Why are you helping me take out the garbage? What's going on? Okay? You know, you might want to just get close to him and say, you know what? I want to take out the garbage with you. Because that's just something about how you pick up that garbage. I mean, it's just, men just, our egos need to be stroked. That's just things that you could do, like, when you cook dinner for him, y'all heard the old adage of, he'd like to see you in a certain kind of outfit, uh, actually, which means, the less the outfit, the better. Y'all remember hearing about that stuff, right? Yeah, well, I don't know why y'all don't believe that men have visual uh, issues where he gotta see certain things for him to get in a mood for something. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with y'all taking a trip down there to uh, that woman named Victoria? She got a lot of secrets, okay? And what is wrong with uh, buying something that is scented and something visual? See, men uh, operate through his, his, uh, his, of course, his taste buds. Of course, that goes into his stomach and he's happy. But y'all are forgetting, though, his nose got a lot to do with it. Or if you didn't think that was the case, why would you put on certain types of perfumes and things like that? Why would you uh, 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 put things in the air and the atmosphere like certain uh, sprays and what have you, if you didn't think 
that his nose has something to do with it. Sir nose. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, why can't you just uh, cook a dinner and then instead of you give, uh, making him a plate or telling him to go in there and make his own plate, why don't you make him a plate, y'all sit at the table and light a candle? Oh, baby, would you light my fire? Why don't you just light a candle one day? And just sit down there with, with some kind I'm talking about them fragrance candles. And just sit there and eat dinner with him. And watch how he eats dinner. Watch how slow he eats the dinner. Uh -huh. And then buy him, yeah, his favorite drink. The drink, okay, whatever it is. But then buy him something different. Say, I want you to try this. Because you know his taste bud. Yeah, you do. You know what? Let me sit down. I'm going to teach y'all something here. Some of y'all heard of this before, and I'm going to teach it to you, okay? I'm going to show y'all something. You know, behind me is a light there. That light back behind me sets a mood. I'm in the park, and the light behind me dimly lights this park. The circumference of this park has dim lights. And it's, it's lit in just enough uh, to give it the perfect ambience for when people come out here to walk, uh, it puts them in the mood. That's why I told the ladies to take your men for walks, okay? Because it, it causes his, uh, his visual, uh, when the ambience change, it causes his psyche to change. That's why uh, people who are in the industry of medical uh, and, and psychological uh, the hospitals make sure that they do certain things or don't do certain things because what it does is it messes with the mentality of the patients. You're like, what's that? Well, if, we, if you ever go to a place where people are, are mentally ill, these hospitals, okay, in Chicago, they're closing down a whole lot of them, unfortunately, which causes people to be homeless. And most of the homeless uh, in Chicago, many of them are mentally ill, but they're closing down the institutions, okay? Uh, but what happens is there's two things. It's the, it's the color scheme and it's also the music scheme. You can set your house up to an atmosphere where mood is changed. You know it, but you stop doing it. I don't understand that. Music changes the atmosphere. I don't know no married couple yet who, when they get into a place where they say, let's touch each other, it's time for us to... Uh, 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 do do benevolence with each other. Y'all know what I'm saying without me saying it. I don't know a couple who say that they put on Mahalia Jackson when it's time to do the thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know nobody who puts on James Cleveland when it's time for them to be intimate with each other. If y'all do, y'all are the most holiest people I know. On the, even God is not as holy as y'all. Mm -hmm. I just don't know no other. Okay, I'm gonna hear Luther and his Vandross. I I I I I want I want to hear uh, Anita and her bakers, okay? I mean that's that sets a particular mood because two things happen. It is the atmosphere that comes out of the melody itself and it is the understanding of the lyrics. It's called prosody when melody is married to the lyrics in music. And then the color scheme because certain colors causes someone to either be a little excited or it causes them to be calm. Uh huh. That's why they said that the police pulls over more red cars than they may pull over uh, possibly blue cars because the red it gives the police this this psychological this this thought that you are speeding even though you're only doing 50 uh, in a 55 zone. It it appears that you're speeding because you're in the red car. Mm-hmm. So we can try these things at home, but we won't do it. All right. Let me let me let me point y'all. It's a dark sky. Unfortunately, the moon is not out here, and there's not really any stars out here. I don't see the Little Dipper, Big Dipper. But when you look in the elements up there, you will begin to see certain things happen, especially if it's, if it's in the daytime. Let's see here. Okay. There's, I, well, there's nothing up there. There's a there's a steeple there. There's a church. Okay. Let me tell y'all something. Uh, uh, this this right here. Uh, uh, let me help you out. In high school, we learned about what's called the atmosphere. I'm about to take y'all to school. Sit down. Get you a cup of coffee. Sit with Sir Walter Jones for just a minute. I ain't gonna be long because I ain't ate yet. All right. I'm gonna talk about 
the atmospheric, uh, the existence of atmosphere from the from uh, above the earth to into the earth's atmosphere and I'm going to talk about I, I, and I found an article um, I'm gonna open up my iPad it's around here somewhere uh, uh, and I'm gonna show you where certain the elements causes a man to have certain types of moods mm-hmm uh, you can play there's a lifting from <laughs> James Cleveland Marcus <laughs> absolutely okay all right so you can't see this because it's nighttime but if it was daytime I'd be able to give you a better depiction of what's going on here okay now this is Sirsville this is this is the park all right this is my lovely park it's nothing like it in the world all right and that's the sky there okay and in in this sky in this sky we have what's called the it's the, the I think way up there is the exosphere okay see if I can uh, I'm trying to focus this thing the exosphere it's like 6,000 miles up in the sky it's the outermost limit uh, the layer way up there okay and it actually merges with the solar winds you can't see it but it's up there y'all and right below it right below it is, uh, is, 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 is I think it's called the thermosphere right below it okay it's about 400 miles above okay it's it's the base of the exosphere y'all learned this in, in, in grammar school in high school and all that stuff and be below that or around that thermosphere is what's called the uh, ionosphere okay you probably can see it better over there all right that ionosphere okay and that ionosphere is where those radio waves are and the, the government is trying to uh, figure out how they can change the elements of the earth by these radio waves. Y'all heard of HARP, H-A-A-R-P or something like that? Y'all heard of that? Well, that's, that's where they get that, that's where that, they mess with the ionosphere. Anybody heard of that? Mm -hmm. Those auras, okay? If you heard of auras, if you ever look on the History Channel, or sometimes you look in the sky, depending on where you are, you see these auras. Those are the northern lights. Ooh, those northern lights are beautiful. And I believe it's the northern lights point, I believe, to heaven. You're like, where do you get that from? I don't have to do a show on that. When y'all see those lights doing all this and giving a, and a, 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 a sky show, that's God showing off. And he's giving us a hint. He's, he's showing us patterns here the residue his fingerprints his handiwork is in those northern lights that's the ionosphere in that area over there and i'm telling you that points to heaven because it's in the north it's called northern lights i know this is nerdy i'm sorry y'all but that's just the way it is okay as we as we point upward there the then the mesosphere is the next level okay it's about about 50 miles up there uh, and and actually, it's really the coldest place. That mesosphere is the coldest place on the earth, and that sucker is about 120 degrees below. That's Fahrenheit. That's that's like cold. Okay, it's the mesosphere. All these elements, all these spheres, which we call the atmosphere, and we've been calling it kind of wrong there. All right. All these spheres have a place. God made these spheres for a reason. They have a purpose and a place for the earth, and they all can affect our moods. You're like, really? Mm hmm. Oh, it's nerd night tonight. Yeah. I know y'all was expecting some great revelation about my man. Mm -hmm. I'm taking y'all to Nerd Town, USA. All right? So that's what that is. All right? And I wish I could find the moon. The moon is somewhere around here. I don't know. But the stratosphere is right below there, okay? And the stratosphere is about 30 miles up. Mm -hmm. And it contains what we call the ozone layer. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all have heard of UV lights, okay? UV rays, the radiation. That's what that is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And below that is the troposphere. That is the lowest part. Ah, about seven miles up. And it contains 80% of the Earth's atmosphere. That's where we are in propeller, uh, let's say, uh, 
uh, airplanes and helicopters, pretty much helicopters, they're the ones that could travel around the troposphere. That's oh, it's a nerdy night. Nerdy night. Mm hmm Okay? And that's, those are the elements. Those are, I'm still pointing up there. Okay, those are the elements that we've heard about in high school and in grammar school. We heard about it from these guys who are studying the earth science, physical science and all that stuff, and we, we pay no attention to it. But there's something beautiful about it when you look into it. And then there are about three, we call them the heavens, okay? You read the Bible mentions heavens. There's, the, there's this heaven, then there's the outer limits, okay? And then there's the upper heaven, the celestial, the ter terrestrial, okay? That's E.T., extraterrestrial you've heard of that well that's that second level and then there's the telestial where god reigns oh man i'm telling you it's nerd night and i know i'm getting on y'all's nerd if uh if uh, natalie bullock was here she'd be spitting out that knowledge too i think i see bianca hey bianca you on here somewhere all right and these these things here we pay no attention to it. God put it here for us to discover, because He said it is a glory, is the glory of God, to to conceal a matter, but it's the honor of kings to dig that sucker up, and He leaves these traces around so that we could live here peacefully with each other, and it can actually change our moods and our intellect. Ah, just something. But all y'all doing is worried about watching basketball wives and uh, and uh, Olivia Pope. I know I keep bringing them up, but why y'all keep watching it? Okay, and then the sea level and this the ultimate unadulterated dry air near the sea level. I think nitrogen might be the big one. Okay, and that's I don't know, that's up that's 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 up here somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What you say? You got your your <laughs> yeah, I know Davion. I know they can't understand this one here, man. Okay. You got you got the you got nitrogen and oxygen and, and argon and neon and carbon dioxide and helium and, and krypton and hydrogen and and I think xenonin and and all these ends and all this stuff like that, man. It's it's a beautiful masterpiece. It's a beautiful work. Uh, 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 of extraordinary patterns uh, and things that cause us to go into moods and God put it there for a reason. For us to examine it. The periodic table which God put together. Okay, although man put it together but they couldn't put it together except God laid it out on the ground and said, look at this. <laughs> man, I'm trying to tell y'all. Okay, so I found this article here about how our moods can change. All right, six scientific ways weather affects your mood so you can adopt your, adapt your mind and body through the changing seasons. And these things here can actually affect your love life as well. Number one, a lack of sunlight can make you sad. You want to get your man to act right and be a part of who you are? Mm-hmm. Well... Either put him in the sun or take him away from it because, again, it has a different effect on women than it do men a lot of times, depending on... All right, so it says a lack of sunlight can cause a seasonal affective disorder. Y'all know what that is. That's called SAD. Mm -hmm. Number two, cold temperatures can lead to physical uh, leth uh, lethargy, okay? It causes you... Cold temperature reduces sensory feedback, a, a dexterity, muscle strength, blood flow, balance, and you trying to have a baby? You trying to set the mood just right? You ovulating? And you just want things to... Why is it so cold in this place? The brother got sperm count issues. Why is it cold in here? Turn the air off. I know I said it. I don't care. You deep saints. Well, y'all still... Y'all need to go because this, this, this might be messing y'all up. Number three, sunlight makes you spend more money. You want to get in his pocketbook? Is he signing, is he acting stingy? Does it seem like he just won't spend nothing? Put him in the sun. Researchers found that exposure to sunlight is associated with higher levels of spending. Mm -hmm. Since sunshine makes us feel more positive, consequently, it also causes us to shop more. Yes, sir. Consider uh, this finding your silver lining to less sunlight the shorter days can lead to increased savings. <laughs> yeah. Number four, rain can cause you to eat more. And rain is something romantic about rain. Y'all tap into that, man. What's wrong with you black folks? Okay, 
rain let it rain y'all keep singing that in church all right uh, paul morton sings let it rain okay but y'all can use that in your love life yes you can but it also can help you those anyway the lack of sunlight associated with rainy days can cause serotonin levels to dip and as serotonin levels decrease carbohydrate car carbohydrate cravings increase yep Mm -hmm. Eating carbohydrates helps depressed individuals feel better because the carb sparks an immediate serotonin increase. I know some of y'all says, I can't eat that stuff. I'm trying to lose weight. Well, I ain't talking to you. Uh, but that happens, uh, that happiness spike is short-lived as serotonin level drops shortly after. All right? So that's what number four is. Rain can cause you to eat more. So you want him to take you out to eat and, he, and you can't get the money out of him? Well, you do number three, sunlight, and then do it in the rain. <laughs> number five, rain can also cause pain, though. So be careful of that. Number six, being outside can improve your memory and boost your creativity as well. All right? All these things can affect the mood. Some of them can affect it positively. Some of them can affect it negatively. But I'm trying to tell y'all, if you try some of this stuff and experiment with this man, you find him, you find yourself knowing him. You see, I heard, and I read what the Bible says, you uh, 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 know them that labor among you. So how are you going to get to know them if you don't just experiment on some things? What do you say? Try dancing in the ring with your partner. I'm trying to tell you. Have y'all ever done that? Have you ever let it rain and you went outside and said, baby, come outside. And I, it's going to be kind of hard for him to do it if you aren't used to doing it. But tell him, let's go outside and play in the rain. Remember that show I did about where I said there's a little boy in every man? Did y'all hear that? There is a little boy resting. And every man and every day that little boy wakes up you may not know when he's there but he wakes up every day maybe around the same time maybe not depending on what's happening in that house that little boy wakes up it does and then what you gonna do with the little boy you might want to breastfeed him Did I say that? that did, I, did I say that? I'm trying to tell y'all, there's an infant, there's a little toddler in every man. And sometimes he's crying for attention, most times, and he needs to be fed. Feed the baby. Feed the baby. He hungry. You're like, how am I gonna feed him? When am I gonna feed him? Well, Breastfeed him. Give him some nurture. You're like, how dare you? Okay. <laughs> I I don't have a problem with fighting with y'all. What are you saying here? Setting the mood began uh, what began way before any activity takes place. Just the anticipation of yep. Setting the mood. Mm-hmm. Yep. Snowball fight. Mm-hmm. Yep. He does. Yep. I'm trying to tell you. Men like to eat. And just like uh, children who don't like to eat medicine, what y'all do is y'all put some uh, sugar on top of it. Y'all mix it with some other stuff like Kool-Aid. He gonna eat it and don't even realize he's eating medicine. Women, y'all know how to do that stuff. Yes, you do. So that little boy is, has woken in that man. Now, tap into it. Yeah. There's so many different moods that you can you can alter in a man. He don't even realize that that mood's being altered. One thing you could do is praise him. You're like, oh no, nah, bro, nah, 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 nah. We in it. We in a moment. We in a, a day of of uh, women's liberality. We can't we can't be praising no no man. Okay, that's fine. You made your bed. You sleep in it. But I'm trying to tell you, if you want to get something out of him, praise him. I didn't say make him a god. I just said praise. You praise your girlfriend when she make you happy. Yes, you do. Stop playing with me. You praise your favorite teacher 
if you're in school. Yeah, you do. Stop playing with me. You praise your pastor. You give him double, triple, quadruple honor at church. God be like, what, I am, what, what happened to me? Y'all like, uh, let's say amen for pastor. Everybody who get up says, let's say amen. And then for pastor, this is pastor. And God says, you call my name three times in service. And you call pastor's name 15 times within a 15-minute period. You praise him. You praise the first lady too. Yes, you do. Y'all play with me. Mm-hmm. Yep, shout out in the valley. <laughs> Charlie Milam. Yes. You praise the movie that you went to go see. The other day remember that movie girls night out maybe i don't know whatever movie that's out right now you praised it you praised the color purple yes you did you praised the movie life yes you did shawshank redemption you praised it you told everybody about that movie the producers the originators the screenwriters of that movie never paid you a dime to spread its gospel but you did it anyway didn't you? You loved that movie. You told everybody you went on Facebook and social media and told everybody about this ghost. Come see a, a movie. It changed my life. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're sure. You did that. You praised everything around you. You praised your boss. Why? He gave you a raise. Even if it's a 50 cent raise, you come home and say, Oh, my boss. The greatest boss in American history. Just gave me a 50, I didn't think I deserved it. Lord God, he was good. My boss, I tell you. Yes, you did. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're sure. I'm trying to tell you. Everything you do, you praise. You praise yourself. Cause you passed the test. You praise yourself when you, you, you pat yourself on the back uh, because you passed your driver's license, your uh, driver's test. Yes, you did. You, you praised yourself when you graduated from college. Yes, you did. But then you go home to your man. And he wants some praise. And you tell him, go in the kitchen and get your own sandwich. Mm -hmm. He just wants just lip praise, just, just something. And you won't do it. Something wrong. You part of the problem. You see, and then y'all keep bringing up this Proverbs 31 woman, which I think is a great story. I teach it too. I sure do. Every time I go to the park, I, I bring up Proverbs 31 woman. Oh, but if you look at that story, you notice the relationship between her and her husband. It is the ideal relationship. Because he loves her. And she loves him. And he loves her to the, to the point of him. Okay. He out there in the gates among the brethren. He on the job praising his wife. Yeah, he is. He praising her. That's what the Bible says. Proverbs 31. Go there. Y'all been reading it all your time. The virtuous woman. He out there praising her. Why is it that he got to praise her? But y'all don't want to do it in return. Y'all like, well, I ain't got no good man. He'll never praise me. Well, that's, I can't help y'all with that. I'm, I can't help you with that. Let's talk. Maybe you can call me. 588-2300. Call me now and I'll answer. I'll, I'll answer. Just call that number. Okay? But I just can't understand why you can't praise him. So you want the mood to change and you seem like every time y'all fighting, you know why every time y'all fighting, every time you come home, y'all keep fighting? Because... The house is the same. It's like some of y'all's churches. And I know I go here. I seem like I'm always beating up the church. I get that. I don't care. Charlie Malley, I don't care. You know I don't care, right? Uh-huh. Uh, she is the one that praises him because they have worked on it together. And there is a balanced empire. Bam. Charlie, you should be out here walking with me. Okay? Here's the thing. Men are tired of being in a woman's environment every time he opens his eyes. Ooh. Okay. You want me to start it? Okay. All right, ladies. I'm about to upset you. Since you're watching, let me upset you. All right. Number one, he wakes up 
in a bed that reminds him of a woman. It's pink sheets. It's got all kind of flowery stuff on the pillowcase. Okay? He looks up and the and the walls are draped. Even the drapes is a woman drapery. Okay? And uh, when he turned on the TV, it was left on one of those girl channels, oxygen or something like that. He gets up and he goes to the restroom, Cortez, and what does he see? He see uh, a weaver thon in there. They having a yard of telethons where every weave she ever bought in life is hanging on near the shower curtains. Mm -hmm. It's hanging uh, above uh, where the towels, the his and hers, it ain't his and hers, is weave and weaveologist, okay? It's everywhere. It's a weave party, okay? Wigs and weaves. That's the name of the bathroom. Wigs and weaves emporium. And then he see all his hair. Sometimes around the sink in the face bowl and what happened. She didn't have time to clean it up because she was going to work. And he see these curling irons, depending on what kind of woman you are. He see these pins. He see these barrettes. Y'all might got a daughter. I don't know. Okay. The, even the, the curtains to the shower is even uh, pinky with flowers and all that kind. And the toilet is dressed up with all women's looking like it's a women's lounge. Mm hmm. Yes. So he's like, I can't go to the bathroom, a men's bathroom. I can't even bring a magazine in there and, and, and go to the second part. Not the number one. I've got to go to the number two, and I can't sit here this long because every time I look around, I smell and I see. Woman's, woman's, woman's. Then he get up. It's time for him here to get to work. So he go to the closet to find a suit or something that he have to hang for his job and guess what his woman got all this in the closet and he got about three hangers to squeeze way in the back somewhere because she took up the whole closet with her women's apparel Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, I got clothes in here somewhere, all right? And then he go down and look for shoes, and guess what he see on the ground? He see women's one inch, two inch, three inch heels everywhere on the floor. He said, I can't even find my shoes. Her stuff is everywhere. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. Now, it might be a Sunday, so he, uh, uh he on his way to the church. Guess what he going to encounter when he get there? There's going to be a woman usher waiting for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. He going to come in there. There's going to be about 90, 90 to 95 percent women everywhere, sitting every, every which way. Yeah. And he just happened to come to church on Women's Day. It's fifth Sunday. Yeah, come on, child. I'm trying to tell y'all, okay? And then he's sitting there, and then somebody get up there and said, the, uh, the message for today. No, before we get to the message, here come the praise team. It's a woman. She's screaming at him. Get up off your black, dirty feet and praise God. And he's like, you don't, you don't talk to me. Don't talk to me like that. Huh? Are you, do you understand? God, uh, man first, then woman. You don't talk to me like that. Okay, she's just a praise woman. She's a praise team lady. She just, but it's a woman, and and it's and it's an all women's praise team. It's one guy on the team, and he's a suspect. Ah, yeah. So now it's all women on the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said it. I don't care about what y'all think about me. Okay, and they singing these songs, getting emotional, and they want everybody else to get emotional and tell everybody to turn around and, and touch your neighbor and pat them in the head and, and uh, rub their skin, lick them in the eyeball, say you're in the right place at the right time, and then kiss them on the side of your lips because we, we don't want no herpes simplex six, and then and just tell them oh, God God loves you and I do too, and there's nothing you can do about it, and then I don't know do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. All right, that's what the that's what the women saying. Yeah, and then in walk the praise dancers. Oh, oh, okay, and they don't know how to dress. Yeah, they didn't go to the rehearsal or they didn't go to a seminar. 
Yeah, yeah. And so what happened was they decided that they would say, Ooh, I saw this on TV. Let's let's dance like this. And so what they do, they put on what's called a retard. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, a leotard. Yeah. They put these leotards on, mm -hmm. and um, they didn't realize, though, that some of them had bodies that didn't leave nothing to no man's imagination. Yeah, yeah, Charlie Miley, this is, come on, I'm trying to tell, I'm trying to help y'all out, okay? So she put on these re <clears throat> leotards, mm -hmm. and uh, and then, then what she did was, uh, no, no we, we didn't, you see, they got granny panties, I'm, I'm raw, y'all. I'm sorry. This is the romance in the park. You should go to bed right now, cause it's about to go down. She, there's, a, there's, there's young folk. They, they young women. Okay, they're between the ages of about uh, 16 all the way up to about I don't know, uh, 45. You see, because they don't understand. They, you don't put kids in the army with the adults. You just don't. Matter of fact, kids not supposed to work in the army. Kids not supposed to work a nine to five like they did in the 1920s. But what in the praise team, y'all got kids dancing with the old ladies. Okay, so there's granny panties and then there's thongs up there, and we see them all because we see when y'all bend down and do that move. Uh, when uh, Michael Stampley say, oh, and y'all go down there and do that move, and y'all turn around and show us your moon. It's never half moon. It's always full. Ain't no eclipse up in there. It's straight full. Okay? And when you bend down, and there it is uh, in my face, and I say, Granny panties and thumb. That one's red, hers blue. Y'all think I'm playing. Okay? And then y'all put on this song that makes you feel uh, central. I'm like, is that God in this song? Why? Why I want to? Why I feel like I'm 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 too sexy for my clothes? Why? I feel, why I feel like touching my? This song, this song feels, it feels, it feels kind of wonderful. That, that I didn't know I had a mole right there. Why? Why are you touching yourself in church? Well, this song has set me off. And when I look this way, all I see is, I see, I see. The parting of the Red Sea. What well, parting of the Red Sea? Yeah, she got red panties on, and she, and she's splitting. Yeah, and I want to split, but I don't want to embarrass me. I don't want to embarrass my woman over here because she invited me here and I said I was gonna come. But I got to look at this, okay? So then they doing the dance, and then they do the bends going down and over, and then some of them Leo Tods are so tight that you can see. I feel like I've been the the Sahara Desert. Yes, I'm in the Sahara Desert, Charlie. Why? Because there's camels everywhere. Yes, I see camels. These camels got toes. And they just are dangling in my face, and I'm trying to look at my Bible because I can't take it no more. Now, why am I horny in church during the praise dance? Huh? What kind of mess is this? What? Why is, why is church turned into a porn worship? That this, that's what's going on. So this man is surrounded by this, and then, it, then the, 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 it's powerful to speak. He said, "Thank God, the speaker's got to get up and, and and take this thought that I had in my brain, take it out of me, Lord, through this speaker. Take it out of me, please, Jesus." And then the the man gets up there and he begins to uh, molest his wife with his words. I want to thank God for my wife who is the epitome of my sexual desire. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We, we, we got too many singles in our churches to be hearing all this sex talk from the pulpit. I can, Charlie, I can't take it, man. The, he, she is the, I get it, the, the softer version is she is the cream. In my coffee, but a single man, when he hears cream, you, you can stick with sugar. But don't use the cream analogy, okay? And it's just, and you know, just 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 you're playing footsies in the pulpit, okay? Oh, the baby, she she is a uh, she's my elixir to my bones, and she she when when we at home, I don't want to hear no more. Don't bring home in this thing. I'm I'm suffering suffertash in my flesh, and you're gonna go on the pulpit and and undress your wife and strip her down. Are you going to tell us about the mole on her left cheek, too? I ain't talking about the upper cheek, okay? I don't get it. I don't get it. 
So now he's sitting like he done left the house, woman, woman, woman. Every room he in, from the closet to the bathroom to the car to the the to the usher, women's, women's, women's. He's like, ain't no man nowhere in my life. And then he gonna give us one of them sermons about women, women that aren't loose. Oh no! Now he's stealing sermons. Oh. And then his, he get through with all the women's women's uh, topics of uh, these innuendos and these catchphrases. And then his wife get up there to, to do the altar call and she said, no more sheets. Shut up. This, y'all should call this the Play Jerusalem Church of God in Christ. Makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. So now he got to go home and say, that's it. I'm done with this. I ain't going back to church. I ain't going back. He can't wait to go to work. Because that's the boys club. <laughs> so he built him, him a dungeon because of this. He built him a man cave because of this mess. So how y'all going to change his mood? How you going to do it? Find balance. Find what pleases this man and take him there. Take him to that place. Take me to, okay, take him there. He want to go there so bad, but he don't know how to tell you because he don't want to upset you. He tired. Everywhere he go, it's a woman's world. He turned on the radio in his car and Beyonce was talking about who ruled the world. He like, turn this off. I want to hear the news. Give, I want I want to hear Donald Trump. Okay, when your man requests the greatest hits from Donald Trump, y'all in trouble. Y'all in trouble. Set the mood, y'all. Be soft. Be kind to this man. I don't care how mad he gets. Be kind to him because that destroys all kind of ego he got when you're kind to him. You're pouring coals on his head when you're kind to him. I know it's hard for some of y'all. That's why they call y'all bitter. Ooh, I said that in front of black people. I said bitter in front of black women. You know, it's like calling the white man a racist. Have you ever seen him change colors? Like the leopard spots. Uh, if you call a black, a, a white man a racist, he, he, he'll go from a leopard to a, a zebra. Mm -hmm. His stripes will go from horizontal to, or to vertical. <laughs> That's the worst thing you can do to him. It's like cussing him out. To a black woman, if you call her bitter, you might as well pack your bags and, and get to stepping. Run, Forrest, run, because it ain't going to be a, a, a good night for you. Yeah. So he thinks you're bitter. But all you're doing is saying, defending your stance. That's all you're doing, but he thinks you're bitter. So you got to just act non bitter. Say, you know, baby, you know, baby. I don't like the way you said that, but let me tell you something. I have to respect what you said. Charlie, you help me with that? Walk with me, Charlie. I'm walking. Okay, you walking? Good. I, 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 I can only do nothing but respect your opinion on what you said. I get it. You're upset. You know what? Let's just change the subject or let's just agree to disagree. And let's go. Let's do something. Man, I'm telling you, this stuff works all the time. Y'all. If this ain't working on y'all's relationship, y'all got the wrong man. Y'all chased him and y'all got on y'all knees and proposed to that man. Yes, you did. You you took that away from him. Stop playing with me. Mm -hmm. When you talk like that, watch a man's continence. He will hit. I'm trying to take Charlie. You see, see, I got some agreements here. What he said, sit and watch his favorite sport or whatever, whenever uh, his favorite thing to do. Let him know. Yep, let him know. You into him. And sometimes the best way to let him know you went to him is to say nothing at all. Yep, it changes the atmosphere. That's the whole point of this thing is changing the atmosphere. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Here's when you know a man really loves your company, but yet he's in the room and not saying nothing. See, what y'all have done was y'all interpreted him not saying nothing as he don't really care about your company. That's the biggest lie, okay? I'm about to prove it to you, is what he says. Here's the thing, because this has happened to me in many occasions back, way back in the day, okay? Watch this.
You walk in his dungeon, which could be a no-no, depending on your man. You walk in his dungeon and you sit there. All right? He said, hey, baby. He said, hey. And he watching his favorite show? Or he doing something? Hey. Okay? And you just sit there. Don't say nothing. Read your book. Bring a book with you. Just read it. Or do, or occupy yourself. Maybe, uh, now don't touch his papers. Don't touch nothing on his desk. Don't tell him I'm going to clean his desk. No. 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 If it's dirty, if it's the dirtiest thing you ever seen, don't touch it. He need it that way. Because he ain't going to find nothing if you move nothing. Okay, don't do it. Take you something like a feather and you just dust. Don't move nothing in the man cave. I need to, I'm trying to save y'all's life. All right? You dust. And you, and you say, hey, baby, that's nice. I ain't seen this before. What is this? Okay? See, every man wants you to admire his environment. If he created it, he wants you to admire it. Uh, uh, I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help y'all. He bought this car. Praise the car. Because praising the car praises him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he said a word you had never heard before. Praise the word. You praising him. You go into his, his den and you find something that you know he like. Go upstairs and do some research on it. Google it. And come back downstairs and say, you know what I found about this thing? And he like, ooh, you know about that? I'm impressed. Praise his den. You praising him. Come on, come on, come on, Cortez. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm beat to the waist. Okay, what is it, Charlie? He accommodates you in his space and shows you the attention you deserve. You see what I'm saying? So there's a couple things you got to do. You walk in his den, don't say nothing. Just sit there and bring your favorite book or bring some needle and thread and just be threading stuff. Don't say nothing. Number two, if you're going to talk, talk about something that he loves in the door. That which actually pees you off because he like it more than you. So you praise it and watch. All right. Number three, you're there for about 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Watch what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen? Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Here's what's going to happen. You're going to get up and walk out. And y'all remember that movie, uh, Waiting to Excel? You remember that movie? Well, remember when she was walking away from him? He was at the house. What's his name? Uh, I forget his name. And he was, didn't he die? What's his name? The, the singer, the tap dancer. She was walking away from him. That big girl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she said, I wonder if he looking at me. Yeah, uh-huh. Watch it. When you get up and walk out, if you got eyes behind your back, he going to look at you. Hey, <laughs> Gregory Hines. Yes, that's him. Keep quiet. Support talk. Hey, <laughs> yes. Watch. He going to watch you walk out. Because right now, he's interested in you. He is mesmerized by you. He might even want to take you somewhere else in the house. And I ain't talking about the bathroom either. Well, the bathroom can be a good place if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Okay, he gonna watch you. Now, if he speaks to you, he gonna say one of two things. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Here go, here go. Number one, he gonna say, now he, he gonna ask you this, and you gonna think that's negative, but it's not. He gonna say, hey, babe, can you, can you get me something out of the refrigerator? Can you get me? He gonna ask you for something. He gonna ask you for something. Now, he been down there all this time, but he gonna ask you for something. To bring back. Why is he asking you to bring it back? Ooh, y'all don't getting it. Y'all ain't getting it. Charlie, they ain't getting it. They ain't getting it. They ain't getting it. Okay? Number two, here's what he wants. Here's what he gonna say. He gonna say, oh, oh, okay, you, you getting ready to go? Now, what he really saying is, why are you leaving? I'm enjoying your company. Even if you wasn't saying nothing, he wants you there. He just wants you. He don't want you to say nothing. He just wants you in the room. It's like the presence of the Holy Ghost. You just want to feel it in the room. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's in his language. Come on, Charlie. It's in his language. Yep. He he will get up. Uh, yep. Leave us. Yep. He, yep. Here comes the boom. <laughs> Charlie, you should be walking with me. I'm trying to tell y'all ladies, when he's comfortable with you, and you done boosted his ego that way, he wants you in the room. Come on in the room. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. He don't want you to leave. And then he going to talk to you. Yes, he is. And watch this. He may say some of the dumbest things you've ever heard in y'all's relationship. Mm -hmm. But watch this. Remember I talked about the little boy? The boy showed up in the den. Because <laughs> little boys can say the craziest things. That little boy, even though your man is 51 years old, he going to say something stupid. And you're going to be like, don't ruin it for him. If he say something funny to him but it's stupid to you, laugh like it's the funniest thing he had ever said. Because if you reject him by rejecting the opportunity to laugh, that's it. He just shuts you off. And you won't see him again to maybe tomorrow. He'll get over it. But you ain't gonna see him tomorrow. He'll come to bed tonight, but you ain't gonna see him till tomorrow. Is you do you do you y'all hear what I'm saying? <laughs> come on. I know men are about perplexed, complex and all these plex. I know, but you made your bed. I'm trying to help you dwell with him now. Yep, you need to publish a man's dictionary because <laughs> Cortez, I'm trying to tell you, I've been on this earth too long. I know how it works. The times when I just didn't want her in the room. I didn't want her to say nothing. I didn't want to smell her. I was just feeling that moment. I don't you you were here in the wrong time. Don't come down here. You just gonna mess up my mood. I don't want you down here. So sometimes you just gotta know he don't want you down there. You know by his vibes. He don't want you down there. But what you do, you try to force yourself, yourself on him. You try to force him to be hospitable to you. It ain't going to happen. Matter of fact, it gets worse like a disease that you didn't take care of. It gets worse. And then before you know, the doctor said, you got six months. <laughs> and your relationships are like that. Some of y'all relationships are like that. You keep forcing your way into that man, forcing your way into his heart. And then <clears throat> relationship-wise, you got six months. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep, he's corny. But it's him living on her, and he's simply, and he's simple, but he's trying to show affection. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Charlie, you walking, ain't you? <laughs> I know you're walking with me, man. This going to help y'all. So, ladies, I see y'all. Y'all here. Good. I'm trying to tell you, set the mood. And it may seem uncomfortable because you've been doing the same thing over and over again and y'all know what that defines, right? Y'all been hearing it all your lives, okay? You know what that means. But set the mood. You know what he wants. Give it to him. And all your dreams and desires and aspirations, he going to make that come true. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the wrong key, so I had to go to falsetto, Charlotte. I just, I just couldn't do natural. Okay? So, D.L. Bell, let me tell you, man. I'm going to shut this down, but I'm trying to tell a lady something here. Men want to be praised. You ain't got to get on your knees. You ain't got to worship him. He just want a little bit of praise. That's it. For a short period of time, and that's going to hold him over until the next praise come. Your job is done. It's like uh, the boy. It's like the... What do you call the, uh, do you do your one good deed for the day? Boy Scouts, is that the Boy Scouts? Okay, you do your one good deed for the day and you're good until tomorrow? That's your man. You do that one good deed, you're good till tomorrow. Or maybe that night. I'm, man, I'm telling y'all we simple. Y'all know we simple. Here's why. You told him to empty the garbage today. Okay, baby, empty the garbage. He said, I get to it three or four times. Okay, finally, it's stinking in there. Okay, so into the garbage, baby. Okay, he goes and empties the garbage because it's full now. Okay, it's got to be full. <clears throat> All right. Now, tomorrow, you're going to cook a big meal. You may even have friends over. 
y'all used a lot of garbage. Okay, now the garbage is filling up. By the end of the night, you're going to ask him. He gonna, you're going to say, baby, can you enter the garbage? Guess what his response to you is going to be? You ready for this? For you YouTube people, because uh, y'all ain't, ain't able to talk. This is live. Here's what he's going to say. Bae, I emptied the garbage yesterday. Now, why is he going to say that? Because men are simple. Because men do things <clears throat> and they expect it to last in you for a period of time. A long period of time. A longer period of time than you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. And that place could be stinking like, like skunks and came through the backyard and they decided to have an orgy in there. He don't care. He ended that garbage yesterday. And he, calc he calculated... Maybe by Thursday it might get full again, even though the place is stinking. That's men. That's why God made y'all help me, because we crazy. Okay? Here's how dumb people, here how dumb men are. Okay? <laughs> I, I figured this out. I figured this out, ladies. Here's how dumb men are with y'all. Because y'all are clever. Y'all having a fight or disagreement, something that's peeing y'all off. Okay? He nervous, first of all. He nervous. He got he didn't got busted, caught doing something. He don't have to be cheating or anything. He just got caught doing something, or he should not have said something. He just peed you off. All right. Y'all upset, and then you stop you stop saying something. You get quiet, which you know is a weapon for a man. There's two weapons you know that destroys a man. Number one, you withhold sex. Number two, you get quiet. I know I'm right. Okay. So he used to you. He used to both of those things. He used to it, but he hates it. He can't take it. All right? So you're quiet. So now y'all sitting there. And so the little boy wakes up in him. Mm-hmm. Come on, Diane. You know I'm right. The little boy wakes up in him. Now he begins to want to play with you. See, this is the way. This is men's conversation. This is his language. You see, when, when two men come together, they ain't talking about some baby. Uh, they, well, they're not going to say baby. They're not saying. They, they don't come together and say, hey, man, I love you. Hey, man, I love you, too. And they, they hug. They, they, we usually don't do that. We usually don't do that. What we do is we body slam each other. That's our way of saying, I love you. Uh, when my son lived with me, if he lived with me for many, many years, and when he turned 18, I said, son, when you turn 18, you can leave if you want to. Now, I'm not going to kick you out, but if you want to leave, go ahead and leave. I prefer you leave so that you can know how it feels to be independent. <laughs> but, you know, I'll stay here to help you. So, he decided to leave. He didn't leave on bad terms. He didn't burn no bridges. He just felt like it was time for him to leave. I said, okay, son. All right. He packed his stuff that night. Uh, and uh, so when he was walking to the car, I looked at him. He looked at me. He walked up to me. He put his hand around my waist. He picked me up and body slammed me on the concrete. Almost broke every bone in my body. He said, all right, Pops, I'm out. Got in his car. And drove, and drove off. Okay? Now, only men know how to interpret that. I looked at his eyes and I, and I, and I heard through the body slam, my son says, Dad, I love you too. Mm -hmm. See, only he and I understood that. The women around didn't get it. They didn't get it. That's how y'all gonna separate? Yes. He just told me he loved me more than, than, than I can imagine. <laughs> it's crazy, ain't it? Yes, it's crazy. That's us. That's how brothers do. The little boy, uh-huh, the little boy slaps on the girl that he likes. He beat her up. Okay? He goes in her book bag and do stuff. Why? He loved that girl. Yep little boys so there's little boy men and so we know y'all mad at us so we started saying stupid stuff and we start playing in y'all head we ain't never played in your head before but we know you mad and we scared stiff because we know when you mad y'all get cunning <laughs> and y'all start going see when y'all go looking for stuff you're gonna find it 
You pick up his phone, the first number you found, that's her. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. He stashed up in his dresser drawer or in the closet. The first place you go, you find it. Why? Because God put that in you. That intuition, God puts a map in all women, and y'all find it. Bam. And men know it. So he like, oh, my God, is she going to discover this lie? So he starts doing stuff to throw you off. Now, here's what a woman would do. She starts whistling or she going to sing. <laughs> y'all don't think I know y'all? Man. When y'all get peed off at us, y'all go do a little whistle. <whistles> do a little whistle. <whistles> and make your day, yada, yada. Y'all start singing like Mahay Jackson. And here's what it does, Charlie. It throws off the trail. It's the dog who's chasing after the convict. And the convict puts down pepper or something down there to throw off the trail. That's what women do. The woman know that her silence is making him nervous. So what does she do? She starts singing. <laughs> yep. Whistle while you work. And what it does, it calms something in him, and the, he interprets her whistle or singing as she got over it. No, she didn't. It may take her years to get over it. But at that moment, she's in control. Control! Mm hmm. She set the pace that day. At that moment, she is the king <laughs> of the house. <laughs> yes. So he said, oh, everything must be fine. Whew, I got over that hump. I sure did. He goes to sleep that night. He wake up the next morning. And depending on how the situation is, all his bags probably in the trunk by now. I don't know. But it may not take 24 hours. It may take uh, six months. But she coming back. But she gonna whistle her way through it. Mhm. Mm That's us. Men are just dumb. <laughs> just, men are dumb. Okay. And we know we dumb. So, so we we do dumb things to entertain ourselves. It's self entertainment. Come on, Charlie. What you saying? Throw his hat. Yep. <laughs> in to <the> see. <laughs> yeah, he throw his hat in. Now, you know, the original reason to throw your hat in is because the milkman delivers while, <laughs> while you at work. The milkman delivers, <laughs> the paper boy delivers, okay? The meat man stops by too. <laughs> so, the original reason of throwing your hat in is to give the milkman, the meat man, the pipe fitter, <laughs> That's the plumber, y'all. He's I'm the plumber. I come to fix the sink. Who is it? It's the plumber. <laughs> yeah, him? Yeah. That gives those dudes enough time to leave. Because he sure love that woman. He don't want to lose her. So he put up with it. Yeah. The mailman. Come on. He, he's got special delivery. <laughs> okay. All right. So as I close, because it's kind of chilly out here in Chicago. It's September. Um. Set the mood. Set the mood. You know what that mood is. You've been with him this long. You know what it is. You know his love language. We got five of them. Y'all read the book. Old Gary Chapman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Diane, I'm trying to tell you. You know what it is. Mine's physical touch. Gotta touch me. That's just mine. That's mine. I don't know, Charlie, I don't know what yours is. But mine's, you gotta hold my hand. You got to touch me. You got to do something with my body. Okay. And I ain't even talking about sex. I ain't even talking about that. Some of the most fulfilling things that you can do with a man is let him hold your hand. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Or rub his head. And you got him. He been twitterpated. Uh-huh. My second one, of course, is, uh, I think it's words of affirmation. Yes. Not because I got this big eagle I need y'all to throw praise me no uh, it's just a different kind I don't and I can't explain it uh, but I don't need it from everybody it's just certain persons that I need it from you see when I'm in a public place I don't need the public to, to praise me I don't I don't look for it so I do a lot of good things for people 
and sneak out the back door. Because I don't, I don't want them to, because I feel uncomfortable. Now everybody's giving me attention. I feel uncomfortable, so I leave. My, my family would tell you that. I'm the middle kid. I don't hang around the family that much. I don't. That's a flaw of mine. So I don't need the public praise. But certain individuals, if I'm falling for you, words of affirmation, I need it. I'm telling you all the truth. That's my transparency. A lot of men ain't, ain't transparent like that. Okay? Charlie says it's communication. Communication. Yes. Mm hmm Charlie said, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Go ahead, talk to me. You know your man's love language. You do. And if you don't know by now, if you don't know it by now, you will never, never. <laughs> okay? You need to get to know what it is. And then once you find out what it is, tap it. Don't tell them you're tapping into it, because if you tell them that, you ruin it. It's like t uh, telling a joke, and now you got to tell, uh, talk, explain the punchline to you. A horrible comedian. No, find his language and tap it. If you got to tap it all night long, tap it. He don't even know that you're doing it. Just tap it, and he gon' he gon' he gon' explode. He gon' like this is the greatest woman. <laughs> You ever, saw, you ever saw a man cry because he was so in love with you? <laughs> uh, what's wrong, baby? Uh, and he hardcore? He a thug? He thug life? And he talk like this, well, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm, you know what I'm saying? And you trying to be romant romantic to a thug? You ever try to be romantic to a thug? And, you know what I mean? You know, so, you know, we down there over there. Me and my moms, you know what I'm saying? We was, we was eating that pie, you know what I'm saying? You know? You're like, baby, th can you say some words? Because I don't know what you're saying. Well, you know, you know I love you, you know what I'm saying? But when you start doing something for him, and you spoke his language, you know what he going to do? A thug, big burly dude with his pants uh, sagging, he going to let <laughs> You like what's wrong, thuggy? A thuggy little, 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 little fire starter, little, little pistol popper. What, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong, baby? <laughs> I, I love you. You love me. You, you ain't never talk like that, little, uh, 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 little, 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 little meth, methamphetamine. You, you ain't never talk like that before. I know, baby. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, you set the right move. Thugs are going to fall to their knees. And, uh, and he gonna, he don't know how to say proper English, so he's going to say, oh, I can't stop crying in him. You, you can't stop what now? I can't stop crying in him. I just, I, I'm, I'm tearing. Uh, and he, he looking for words he saw on Google. He's going to be like, I, I feel, I just, I want to, <clears throat> I, I want to say it, baby. I want to, and you just pull out your phone because he can't even spell the name. He can't sound the name out. I just, I was sitting here constipating on our love life. Constipating on your love life? You, you, you was concentrating? No, I was, I was constipating on our love life. You, a, a fire starter. We need to go to back to school. <laughs> <laughs> trying to tell y'all because men we emotional we just emotional in different ways but you get a thug thug life to start crying <laughs> he gonna throw his gun away <laughs> I'm tired of it I'm tired of it <laughs> what's, what's wrong with felony Mike um, <laughs> I'm tired of slinging and ladies y'all got the power y'all got the power Stop niggas <laughs> from robbing the bank. I'm telling you, y'all just y'all like what's the what's the guy who played the part on Martin? Uh, uh, what's the what's the uh, Jerome in the house? Woo, he Jerome in the house, cause Beatty B. Mm -hmm. Beatty B made Jerome in the house fall in love with him, and he's like. <laughs> Jerome in the house. Let me tell you something. Y'all done fell in love with you, girl. <laughs> I'm going to stop my pimping. Women are the only ones I know who can do that. Well, the brother pick up the phone. Say, put your mama on the phone. <laughs> and 
ain't never coming home. I'm trying to tell y'all, Diane, y'all got that power. You need to take heed to it. Mm -hmm. You can create what you want. You set the atmosphere, create your own hurricane. That's it. That's it. That is it. Right? I hope this helps some of y'all set, set that atmosphere. Danny, I see you there. I see you set it. Vanessa, come on. You need to set this atmosphere. Stop playing. Stop playing. You know you know you need to set it. Uh huh. What well, get out that park and go, go to bed. <laughs> Dan is telling me to go to bed. Okay, I'ma get out this park. <laughs> it's safe out here though. Let me show it to y'all again. Alright. This is the park. They got lights all around the circumference of this park. Okay? It's in the circle right there. These are houses over here. All these are houses. People live all over here. There's a church right there, so that's the angel right there, okay? There's houses all the way over here, surrounds it. A lot of times, that's a museum right there, okay? And uh, a lot of times the police, while I'm out here, they park right there, or they'll park right here, and they just sit there, and they watch me. <laughs> it's Sirsville. It's the safest place in town. I don't care if it's 3 in the morning, I'm fine, all right? It's a beautiful park. Charlie will tell you, I took him around here and changed his life, you know? He was struggling in his ministry. When he went out to the, and with me in this park, now he can leap through troops. Oh, man, he came home and, and gave his wife every kiss begins with K's. He come out this, okay, let me stop lying. <laughs> okay, Bridget, I'm trying to tell you. It's beautiful. Now this this uh, this is uh, I can't I can't tell y'all all my secrets, but that's a uh, that right there is a hotel. It's dark because it's closed. It's been closed down for many years. But we would go here and have Sunday brunches. Yes, right there. It looks like a Herman Munster's place, and it goes all the way down that way and way down that way, and then it goes all the way around. That's that's a that's a that's a hotel. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, and it's been vacant for many years. Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, two years ago, came to Surisville <clears throat> and designated as a national monument. Yes. Uh, and I thought it was the greatest thing that Chicago had seen because the Pullman Porters, have you ever heard of the Pullman Porters? Those, those men, those black men that would be on the train saying all aboard you hear the train when I said all aboard y'all hear it it's coming that's those Pullman porters they were that they were the most respected men in the country right here in Chicago well here's where they worked where I'm standing uh, and mr. George Pullman was the one who created the Pullman cars those sleeper cars that y'all sleep on uh, the Amtrak trains Right where I'm standing is where those cars were created. Right here. So, what what did Pullman do? Was he built these homes here behind me? He built that church, and he built that hotel right there for his workers. And then they would go across the street. It's still over there, the factories, and he they would build that train you hear. He'd build those trains. And then the Pullman porters would mount, would be on those trains, and they were the ones with that beautiful blue outfit with the hat and the shiny shoes. And they were respected. They were upper, upscale men in Chicago and well around the country because the train traveled across, across the country. And that's where I am. It's Sirsville, you know, because of my legacy. And everybody know me because... I'm here every night, pretty much. Yes. Now, Diane, it's beautiful at night, but you should see it during the day. It's breathtaking. When you go up into the neighborhoods where the, where the people live, God has blessed this little town, and it's the first company town in the United States. So, um, your homework is <clears throat> pull up Pullman, pull up, jo pull up George Pullman on Google tonight if you can. George Pullman. <clears throat> And you'll see something called the George Pullman riots. Um, there was a, they called out the National Guard right here. And there was a riot here. And um, 
because they went on strike because Mr. George Pullman decided to cut their wages, but he did not cut their lower their rents, and they sh they went on a strike. And back then there were no unions. You don't form no unions, or you got shot. Right here. So that's your homework. Google George Pullman, and it is the first company town, a town named after a company, the first one in the United States. So I'm standing on history right here. I changed the name. It's Sirsville. And that's why it's absolutely protected. So you ain't gonna see nothing happening in this park. You see park rangers with them hats walking around here and police sitting over here. This park is protected. Don't know about nothing happening in this park. They just don't. Okay? And even though the you cross the street right there, that's the hood. As soon as you cross the street, <laughs> But the bullets stop at the right there at the street and never come over here. Why? Because God has protected Sirsville in my honor. Yeah. All right. There you have it. Come on, see me. We have to come here during the day because I don't allow. Uh, I don't allow y'all to walk with me at night because I don't want nobody going home saying, some fishy strange was going on. I took a stroll with him out there at nighttime and <clears throat> and uh anyway. So I let Charlie walk with me tonight. I mean the last week because I've been knowing Charlie as long as he's known himself. <laughs> so I trust him. <laughs> Charlie. So I don't allow the ladies to come out here at nighttime because I got to protect my name. <laughs> All right, and if you do go walking with me, I sure ain't gonna tell Facebook. All right now, <laughs> Hi. hit the share button, would you please? If you got any questions, uh, if y'all got any suggestions for any more topics on romance in the park, hit me up. Put it in the comment or go ahead and inbox me, and I'll talk about it. Romance in the park between the hours of 10.30 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. at night, Central Standard Time, okay? And we go raw. Now, I talk about stuff your church won't talk about, all right? So those of you who attend church, I talk about things that your church, it's taboo to talk about. So please, don't have a romance in the park party where you play all of my Facebook lives <laughs> don't do that please don't do that in your church because it ain't, it ain't for mixed audiences <clears throat> I still love the Lord and I'm still saved but I talk about things that y'all don't talk about in your churches Okay, so y'all learn about the stuff I talk about in the street I'm going to bring it up and let me be the sacrificial lamb for these other guys. I'll take the blows. You go on YouTube right now and you see guys calling me all kind of niggas and coons and I hate you. you going to hell. You should see. Go to my YouTube page right now if you can and read the comments. Especially when I did my show on the, the hurricane. Um, Harvey and Hurricane Irma go there and watch how those people what they said about me and I read them and had a, my cup of tea and cracked up <laughs> it ain't no joke y'all they want to come after me and kill me because I told the truth <clears throat> Angela I'm trying to tell you go to my the Sir Walter Jones show on YouTube and read the comments and my YouTube videos are getting 10,000. I think the biggest one, oh, I got one that's, I did one on Leandria Johnson. That one's got 100,000 views. And they came after me. Ooh, wee. <laughs> I did, uh, recently I did, um, what's her name? What's the one with the Gospels? What's her name? There's an army rising up her in, um, uh, that, uh, that that sexy vixen with the big behind, okay? Nikki is somebody, okay? I did that show, and ooh, the, the saints ate me up. 
<laughs> and I said, thank you. Please, can I have another? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I do it for my enjoyment. <laughs> okay, y'all. <laughs> I'm gone. Bye now. Bye-bye.